welcome back to Atreyu News. We all remember this retard, the guy who would refuse to stand during our country's national anthem breaking. Colin Kaepernick receives terrible news, as he should, for what goes around comes around. Colin Kaepernick's football career may be over, folks. NFL teams are picking up players left and right, except Kaepernick isn't one of them. NBC Sports reported, players have been signing contracts at a lightning fast pace around the NFL for the last three days, with almost all the top players already signed just 72 hours after free agency started. But there's no news about one of the most talked about players during the 2016 season, Colin Kaepernick. Kaepernick, the quarterback who once led the 49ers to the Super Bowl and more recently began a national controversy when he declined to stand for the national anthem, has yet to be publicly linked to any team. It's possible that some team has quietly reached out to Kaepernick or his representatives, but if so, it's been very quiet. With no leaks to the media, does that mean no teams are interested in Kaepernick at all? It's possible both for on-the-field and off-the-field reasons. There are probably some NFL owners and personnel people who are turned off by Kaepernick's anthem stance, even though he now says he'll stand for the anthem. But dozens of NFL players followed Kaepernick's lead and kneeled for the anthem last year, and there were no reports of repercussions against any of them. NFL teams are willing to employ players who do not stand for the anthem so that they so that can't be the only reason for the lack of interest in Kaepernick. Well, that's funny. Even if his career is over right now, obviously his name is tarnished. And half of the country hates his guts. The other half probably doesn't even know what to make of it. Looking what's, look what some Irish Americans are planning for Trump on St. Paddy's Day. Irish and Americans are planning yet another protest of Trump's immigration policies on St. Paddy's. Huffington Post reported, excuse me, in the hopes of amplifying their objections to President Donald Trump and his policies, Irish and American progressive activists will host an event called For Human Rights and Welcoming Immigrants on St. Patrick's Day in New York City. The borderless society that these idiots dream about can be found across the known world, and none of these countries that have the so-called open border society they would pay to live in. There's not a place on earth with an open border that these idiots would rightfully live in, or deliberately for that matter. Irish Stand, as organizers are calling it, will take place in the Riverside Church on Manhattan's west side on Friday evening. It will feature speeches from a number of Irish civil rights advocates, including Irish Labour Party Senator Ada O. I can't even pronounce it, Ryer, Ryerden, actor Gabriel Byrne, or Bernie, comedian. Maeve Higgins and author Colm McCain, as well as a prominent American faith leader, artists and activists like Sean King, we all remember Sean King, the guy who was born white pretending to be black, yeah, mental illness of the movement for black lives, even though he's not even black. Tickets are $15 and the proceeds will go to the American Civil Liberties Union. It was especially important for Irish people to hold a rally on St. Patrick's Day, Ireland's national holiday, according to Senator O'Reading, O'Reading, that's what I'm calling him, whose impassioned appeal for the Irish government to criticize Trump's xenophobic rhetoric went viral in November. Xenophobic. A lot of icks and eas and isms, lots of pronouns for the left. New bill introduced that could change the presidential elections forever. And wouldn't the Democrats love if this happened? A state lawmaker has introduced a bill that will elect the president by popular vote. Of course the Dems would want to do something like this. They have approximately 3 million illegals that voted in the last election. Or at least, if not illegal voters, then the votes should be void. If you look at places like Detroit and other inner cities where the voter fraud is quite obvious and apparent, I remember when Michigan got recounted, they found like 70,000 ballots couldn't be counted and they were void. 
because they weren't done correctly and there was a lot of red flags that went up within the inner cities. Guess who's in charge of Detroit demographically? Think about it. From Review Journal, Carson City, a state lawmaker on Friday, introduced a bill that seeks to elect the president by the overall popular vote. Assemble Bill 274, Assemblyman Nelson Arrio de Las Vegas would enact the agreement among the states to elect the president by national popular vote. The bill would make the electors identified with the president and vice president who win the national popular vote the official presidential electors for each state. The provisions of the bill would become effective on the date that states with enough electoral votes to constitute a majority in the electoral votes, 270 of 538, adopt the agreement. The bill has been enacted by 11 jurisdictions posing 160, possessing 165 electoral votes, 61% of the 270 electoral votes necessary to activate it. The debate over how the president emerged again in 2016's general election when Republican Donald Trump won enough electoral votes to become president, but Democrat Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. So she says, but realistically, Trump won upwards of 95% of the counties. So after you take that out of the equation, she basically won the popular vote, which I still don't believe is true, but let's just say it is, with New York and California, those two states alone, which are major states for illegal immigration, sanctuary cities, anti-Western ideology, and the list goes on and on. They're liberal havens, super states of the liberal psychotic agenda.